How's it going? It's going so well. I like you. I don't even know you, but I like you. I like you so much. Your vibe, your energy, what you do, how you come across, how you portray yourself. I like you on your TikTok. I, the first TikTok I saw was the one where you're like, you break the ice on your ice bath outside your house, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's the one I watched. And then I I watched a few more. I was like, oh, this dude, I got to have him on my podcast so that we can talk about mental health. And then I saw this other TikTok that you did. You look just like my friend Sheldon. I tagged him in there. I love Sheldon. Sheldon is my brother from another mother. Um, And like him and I, we go back like over 15 years. I've, I've saved his relationship so many times. Him and my friend Taylor, like best friends of mine. Um, And then you're like, DM me on Instagram if you want to do podcasts. I'm like, fuck yeah. So I go on your Instagram and I see you and your partner. Like your Instagram is all about you and your relationship, which is a completely different vibe from your TikTok, which is all about mental health, it seems. And I was like, oh, we got so many things to talk about. <laughs> yes, we do. I'm excited to be here. Yay. So, I mean, I came out of left field here for you and here I am smacking you with all this goodness right now. Um, but listen, I just, I like... I don't know what it is. I'm in love with you already. Do you find people do that? Like, do people just meet you and they're just like, Ryan, like we got to be best friends. Um, Usually it's the other way around. Um, I'm a, I'm pretty open from the get go. So I love meeting new people. It's probably one of my favorite things to do is just hop on a call or just like, if I see someone that I like at target or at the store, I'll walk up to them and just say, Hey, I think you're really cool. Tell me about yourself. Um, so I, I appreciate the kind words. It's, it's definitely reciprocated and it's fun to be here. Um, but yeah, I, it's funny. I'm, I'm a very social person. So working from home has been very, very different for me. But anywhere I get the opportunity to uh, meet and interact with new people, I love it. So it's been really fun. I do curiosity. What do you do for work? So I right now I work for a software company here in Utah. Um, so I oversee all the business development operations and uh, project management. So that's what I do full time. Uh, and then in my free time, it's, uh, you know, spending time with my wife and with my dogs. Uh, and then obviously social media content and helping friends and, and family out with businesses. So, so we are here today because of your mental health TikToks. And the first thing I saw you do is an ice bath. And I've been hearing about this for years, about the cold water therapy and how it affects your mental health. I'd like to start with that. Can you tell us about the ice bath, ice baths, why you're doing it and the effect that you're actually feeling from doing it? Yeah, absolutely. So let me give just a little bit of background. Um, about a year and a half ago, uh, my wife and I got COVID. And after I got COVID, I just felt like I, I never regained my energy. Like I, I just felt like I wasn't really myself anymore. I had a ton of brain fog and I didn't really feel like, I just didn't really feel like Ryan anymore. Um, and, and that was really hard for me. So I kind of started down this path where I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to try to get my energy back. I'm going to try to get my, my mojo back and see if I can do it. Um, and I tried a ton of different remedies, uh, everything under the sun that I could think of and that I could research anything that was going to help me feel like myself again. Um, that's what, that's what I was trying out. And so I had a friend recommend that I tried, um, cold showers out. Um, and so I, I did cold showers for probably three or four months implemented it in my daily routine. I just kind of went cold Turkey. I hadn't really done it before. I did a little bit of research, but I was just like, you know what, I'm going to do 10 minutes my very first time. And the first little bit was tough. It was, it was uncomfortable, obviously sitting in freezing cold water. I'm used to turning it all the way to the left and going as warm as I can, but I just kind of turned it barely up and it was as cold as I could get it. And I noticed that it felt really, really, really good. Um, and it had, it had almost a very similar effect that uh, caffeine has for me. It was just like instant energy. I felt like my brain fog went away. The things that I was stressed about before, um, you know, I, I wasn't really thinking of the things that were stressing me out or causing me anxiety. And so I kind of took a little break from cold showers. I do it every time I went to the gym and just kind of close out my workout with it. Um, but a couple months ago, I saw trying to remember who it was. There was a guy I saw on TikTok actually that was doing an ice bath. Um, and so I researched on his page. I was like, all right, let's see where he got this, you know, where he got the tub from. Let's see what I need to do to start doing this. And I told my wife and she's like, I think you're kind of insane for even thinking about trying this out, but go for it. I support you. Try it out. And I did it that very first day, uh, which was about a month ago now, I think. 
Um, and my life's just been totally different ever since. Like I had done cold showers, I'd done cold therapy, but as soon as I started doing the ice baths, it was just like, it was a cold shower times a hundred. And the benefits that I noticed were just, it was taking away my brain fog. It was giving me natural energy in the morning. And I was, I felt like myself again, and I didn't really have to, uh, worry about all the other stuff going on. So. Oh, that's so cool. So why does it do that? Why does it have that effect on you? Um, I'm still trying to study and understand the science behind it. Um, the, the place that I've gotten the most information is going to be from the Huberman podcast. Um, and really what I've learned, there's kind of two things. So, uh, and I, in no way, shape or form, am I a master at this or an expert on the topic, but I like sharing what I've learned. So, uh, there's kind of two things that I learned. One of them has to do with what's called circadian rhythm. So circadian rhythm is kind of our internal clock that operates on a 24 hour cycle and our temperature is also associated. Our, our body has a natural temperature that we associate with uh, our alertness throughout the day. So by getting in, in a cold bath or in a cold shower and starting off the day with some cold therapy, it actually kind of expedites that cycle and helps your body get more alert on a quicker timeline and helps you just kind of wake up rejuvenate, get a quick burst of energy that lasts you for a couple hours throughout the day. Um, I believe there's a release of norepinephrine. Uh, I'm trying to remember the exact terms, but uh, basically it, it also decreases the amount, uh, the, the cold therapy and the shock releases certain chemicals inside of us that make it. So uh, there's been a bunch of studies done on how it decreases the amount of depressive symptoms that people feel, or it helps with anxiety. Um, I posted a video where you know, a lot of people ask me, Hey, I can't do an ice bath. I don't have an ice bath. What else can I do? And, uh, one of the other things that I've done is just filled up like, like a measuring bowl with water and filled it with ice and just kind of dunked my face in it for about 15 seconds. Yeah. Um, but really just like a shock, uh, something that our bodies aren't used to helps us change the state that we're in either emotionally or physically. So, so you said the word norepinephrine, say it again, norepinephrine norepinephrine. Um, and so I like to use um, descriptors for those. Okay. So what does that chemical do? Um, well, let me look it up so that I don't mess it up because I'm a college dropout and I don't know a ton about anatomy and all of that <laughs> stuff. So I don't want to say something totally wrong that's out there. But um, norepinephrine, uh, it looks like it's associated with adrenaline. So it's an organic chemical um, that functions in the brain and body as a hormone and a neuro and a neurotransmitter. So norepinephrine, if I'm understanding it correctly, um, essentially is a chemical that gets released that helps, uh, the brain and the body kind of have different chemical responses to what's happening. Love it. Does um, that work? <laughs> yes. So you kind of answer one of my questions, which is, uh, what are you going to do when you can no longer, you know, have an ice bath outside because, it's going to be summertime. So you're not going to have, right. you know, the icy water. Are you just going to be dunking your face in the bowl of icy water? So there's kind of three options that I've come up with. Um, one, I've seen a lot of people actually taking like an ice, an ice chest freezer. So just like a spare freezer and uh, kind of like waterproofing it, insulating it, and then closing the lid uh, and setting that to about 40 degrees. So I see a lot of people doing that. So I'm yeah. trying to decide if that's like, that's an dedication. For me. Yeah. yeah, it's real dedication. Um, but the other, the other alternative would just be doing cold showers, um, which I've, I've loved doing cold showers. Um, we also live pretty close to a lot of like lakes and springs and brooks. So, uh, I could always just go hop in a river at 7am and it'd probably be just as cold, but, um, yeah, I'll probably supplement it with cold showers during the summer. So what do you say to people like me? <laughs> <laughs> who hate to be cold um you know that's probably been one of I've had a lot of people reach out to me just kind of on Instagram or sending me uh personal messages and a lot of people are just like why are you doing this like why, why are you what not is, shivering <laughs> right like why are you not shivering why are like you like this just seems so dumb why would you put yourself through that um and there's I feel like there's a couple reasons that I personally have done ice baths like I understand that there's a lot of crazy remedies that uh, people are coming up with these days, right? And for me on my mental health journey, it really has just been anything that I've found has helped me personally. So for doing ice baths, 
I've found that doing an ice bath just happens to help me. And some people it doesn't help and some people it does, but I feel like that's for anything in regards to improvement, self personal development, self-improvement. Like if something works for you, stick with it. So the reason I'm doing it is because it helps me out and I like it and I've seen the benefits for it. And I'm not shivering because I feel like my body just kind of goes into shock and is like, I can't even shiver right now because I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> that video was intense. Like watching you get into that, like it, it was so intense, my friend. Um, and I was watching you the whole time and I was waiting for you to do what I would have done. I was just, <gasps> right. Like, and it, it just didn't happen. Like, <sighs> I saw you breathing into it and breathing through it. And I was like, oh, this is so powerful. Like even watching it, I feel like I'm getting some kind of an effect from it. There's other things that you do for your mental health because you're like, you, you use the word ADHD. Do you feel you have ADHD? Yeah. So um, part of my mental health journey. Um, so let's see, in October of 2020 was when uh, my wife and I got COVID for the first time. And about a, a month later, I actually started going to, to therapy. Uh, I've been seeing a therapist for about a year and a half now. And that's been one of the greatest things, greatest decisions that I've ever done um, is, is going to a therapist. So uh, back in July of last year, um, I really felt like I'd like I was feeling like myself again, but I didn't feel all the way there. Um, and so I was talking to my therapist about, you know, kind of the things that I was dealing with, how I would, it was very easy for me to get hyper-focused on something, but lose enthusiasm over something that maybe wasn't as, as, as exciting. Um, and so he, had, he actually had me take a couple like screening tests for ADHD. Um, and most of those came back and indicated that I had ADHD. Um, and so I went to my doctor and, and went through the official test with him. And sure enough, I had, I got diagnosed with ADHD, depression, anxiety, uh, and OCD. So all of those things that like, I had always kind of like indicated towards them and kind of felt like I had certain tendencies. All of a sudden, everything in my life just kind of made sense because I was like, oh yeah, I definitely actually do have something going on. That's more than just me feeling stressed out. Did anybody recommend meditation? Yes. Um, that was actually one of the very first things that I tried. So personally, I... For a second. Yes, the yes. First, one of the very first things that you tried because your therapist got you into it or independent research? Independent research. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interject. Hold your thought. Okay. But it frustrates me when we go to therapy and meditation is not one of the first things that a therapist gets us to do. Agree or disagree, within the first two sessions, a therapist should get you started on meditation because the benefits help in your process. Agree. Now, the only reason that my therapist did not recommend it was because I actually started meditation prior to meeting with him for the first time. Okay. So that, that was actually one of the very first things that he recommended to me. And I said, I've actually already started making the habit of meditating um, morning and night. Um, so I was really glad that he made that suggestion. But I definitely agree. I think you know, my whole experience and journey has been, uh, aside from wanting to save money, like I'm, I'm a pretty frugal person. I sometimes I'll splurge on something. My wife can attest to that, but I, I wanted to find natural ways to overcome the, the things that I was feeling with. I didn't want to, I felt like there had to have been an option or at least some way to improve, make a 1% improvement without having to either go on medication or spend a ton of money to go on uh, nootropics, for example, or like, I, I just felt like there had to have been something that I could have implemented naturally into my daily life. And so as researching, as I was researching, meditation was one of the very, very first things that I've tried. And it's made a huge difference. Um, I, I try to do it whenever I can. Um, sometimes I forget, sometimes I remember, but I always notice a different yeah. I, already, I always notice a difference when I do uh, take the time to meditate. Yes. What's the difference for you? I feel I have four or five things that are kind of my non-negotiables in a day. Um, so one of those is waking up and I, I have to read my scriptures every single morning. I notice a difference in my life when, when I don't, I'm a very religious person. And I notice a difference in my day-to-day -day life when I don't do that. I also notice a difference now when I don't do a shower or a cold bath. Um, and another one of those kind of non-negotiables for me is meditation. Um, and when I, when I don't hit one of those non-negotiables that I have in my life, I notice that I just, I just feel different throughout the day. Um, I think my favorite part of meditation is that it forces you to either use the mind to control the body or the body to control the mind, but also it forces you to just pause. We live in a very busy world. And so by taking five to 10 to 15 to 20 minutes, 
to just sit and breathe and reflect. It's something that we don't get very often. And so I found that just by pausing and taking a breath, it really makes an impact on how I feel during the day. How many minutes a day do you meditate? Um, I actually have two guided meditations that I listen to. And uh, same thing every time, just because I found that that works for me. I've, I've tried a bunch of different things. I'm starting to get into a couple new um, kind of guided meditations, non-sleep deep rest and yoga nidra protocols. Um, but I have two guided meditations by Jason McGrice on insight timer that I listen to every day. Um, so the morning routine is about 12 minutes long and the evening routine is about 10 minutes long. So I would say it's usually between 20 and 25 minutes a day. I love that. Love it. Love it. Perfect. Now, have you researched hyperbaric therapy at all? I have not. Do you know what it is? I have not, but I would be very interested to learn about it. Uh, it is expensive, but it's, it's, uh, just, just th to throw it out there to, cause you know, one of the things I said to you is my husband and I use, you know, alternative methods for mental health. And so, um, we use, like I meditate, that's, that's a big thing with me. And I get all my clients to meditate because, um, as you know, it does have an effect and it shrinks the amygdala, which is the brain's fight or flight, which is stress, fear, and anxiety. Yeah. So it reduces your capacity to feel those emotions by shrinking that part of your brain. That's what I do to address my mental health. What my husband does to alleviate depression and anxiety is hyperbaric therapy. And so oxygen heals. And so if we're talking about the brain, we're talking about healing the brain, like concussions, strokes, people who suffer those can get hyperbaric oxygen therapy because oxygen heals wounds. It, it regenerates tissue. So, um, if you have an injury, uh, people with diabetes, right? The, the circulation isn't getting to their feet and they have gaping wounds on their feet, things that aren't healing. Hyperbaric therapy gets the oxygen to the wounds because it pushes oxygen into all of your tissues. And oxygen reduces inflammation. Depression and anxiety is inflammation in the brain, right? These yeah. cold showers that you take reduce inflammation, um, right? Is, is, there's a... It, have you read that? Like there's an association between the cold baths and inflammation? Oh yeah, hundred percent. I, and it's, it's really just like a, uh, I, I feel like reducing inflammation is key. I feel like I always just feel inflamed and I feel like most people do. Um, but I mean, an ice bath is just like a giant ice pack in my mind. So but there's definitely benefits to reducing inflammation. So as you're saying, yeah. Yes. So reducing inflammation in your body, um, reduces injury, right? When you have an injury that's inflamed tissue, reduce inflammation, you, you heal the tissue faster, depression, anxiety, inflammation in the brain. So oxygen, getting oxygen into your system, into all of your tissues, all of your liquids in your body is going to reduce inflammation in your brain and help with depression and anxiety. Also, you know, injuries and energy. So it's one of those things that cost money, but it's, it's, that's something that we use. And my husband, like we have our own because he's so into this and he, he works with other, like he, there's a, um, a hyperbaric um, facility here in town and he volunteers every Saturday to heal people because he's such a staunch believer in that. So we've got, we've got ice baths, we've got meditation. What else do you do for your mental health? Um, one of the other things that I've been doing is float therapy. Have you heard of float therapy? Is that like the isolation chamber? Like the, the yeah. chamber where, Ooh, interesting. Tell me more. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been, uh, there's a, a company here in Utah called body balance, um, that I've been working with a little bit and they have, they have float pools. So deprivation chambers is kind of, uh, it's kind of the, the word that's been coined for float therapy. You'll hear I think Joe Rogan talks about it a little bit, um, but really what it is, the, the one that I've been going to is kind of an open pool. So it doesn't close down. It doesn't close over, um, but it's a, it's a kind of a giant bathtub. It's about 10 feet by 10 feet, I think. Um, and it's got a thousand pounds of Epsom salt in it. So the whole focus of going into a float room or into a, a float session is that you don't really feel, you don't, you don't get distracted by your environment or what's around you. So, uh, the place that I go to, they have the temperature in the environment set to the same temperature of the water, which is also the same temperature as your body. So you don't get distracted. It's like, Oh, the air is colder than me or the water's warmer than I am right now. It's all supposed to just kind of be one experience so that, so that you can just kind of relax and, uh, 
and just feel like you're floating. Like it's, it's really just kind of like a zero gravity chamber that I just like, I don't really feel like I'm there. Uh, but I just, it's, it's, it's a very meditative situation where you, you're just kind of there with your thoughts and you're forced to, uh, relax and wind down and think through things. Um, kind of on your own terms. You can listen to music, you can listen to meditations. They, uh, they have like speakers underneath the water so that you can listen to it while you're floating. Um, but I usually go for about 45 minutes to 60 minutes uh, once a week. Um, so okay. usually go about four times a month. So do, are your ears underwater? Um, halfway. So they, you lay down in this pool and they have like a pillow that goes under your neck um, and then you have earplugs in. I feel like sometimes it covers all the way over my ears. Sometimes it doesn't, um, but it usually doesn't go kind of past the temple area right here. Um, just cause it hurts when you get salt water in your eyes. So it does not feel very good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. How much does that cost? Um, that one is, I believe that one's about a dollar a minute. So it's about $60. Um, that's one of the things that I've noticed. I started floating. I did a, I had a really good friend, uh, my friend Austin who recommended floating to me. Um, and I tried it about a year ago and it was, again, one of those things that I was just like, this is so worth it. And I just, I walked out of there feeling really, really good. Um, so yeah, it's, it's awesome. Um, what about magic mushrooms? I have not tried magic mushrooms. Um, I don't, I actually don't know much about them. So it's micro dosing. So, uh, not enough to get high, Um, not enough for visuals, not enough to feel anything. There's a lot of research being done right now in alternative mental health treatments, and they're kind of going back to, um, you know, drugs like, uh, magic mushrooms, MDMA, stuff like that. And so what they found with magic mushrooms is microdose. So a small dose, a couple times a week helps build new neural pathways. Interesting. Really interesting. So, so I personally, um, as, as, as part of, uh, so I'm, I'm a member of the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Most people know us as Mormons, right? So, so I personally stay away from drugs and alcohol. Um, it's a, it's obviously a, a rule of the church, but it's a decision that I've made. Um, but I, you know, I'm totally okay if other people do it. I think it's, I think it's a great benefit. And there's lots of studies that have come out. And I know, I personally know a lot of people that have benefited from using, um, you know, medicinal marijuana or THC as a recovery method. But personally, it's probably not something that it's not something that I would uh, use as, you know, as a meditative or a recovery tactic. Um, but I, you know, I do know that it works for a lot of people. Um, but personally, I think that's probably just something that I wouldn't end up trying out, but I am very interested, obviously, to learn the science behind it and learning, you know, how it works and, and benefits other people as well. Right. Um, they're using it in uh, depression and anxiety for, uh, you know, in other aspects in dealing with PTSD. So it's, it's kind of interesting because the clinical studies are being done now. So yeah, really interesting to see how this is like kind of being rolled out. And I've, I've invested in, in psychedelic companies um, because I do see this as something that's, uh, you know, hopefully going to replace the pharmaceuticals that have really have some negative side effects on us. I was just going to ask one thing that I was interested in is, um, you know, you say that you have invested in, um, you know, in these companies and that you've, you hope that it replaces um, pharmaceuticals and things like that. Have you used both? Have you used medication and have you used, um, you know, either medicinal or marijuana or something else like that? Have you, have you been on both sides of that? Uh, so I've never taken antidepressants. I've taken okay. an antidepressant for two days and I could feel it crawl in my yeah. brain. Yeah. And it's really odd, like, no. Right. And yeah. so after two days I was like, fuck this shit. And you know what I went into meditation and five HTP. Look at that. Yeah. So did you, I, I, as far as like natural remedies goes, I personally love using essential oils. I, I keep a couple diffusers in my office. Um, I have them all over the house. I use topical blends. I use, you know, environment blends. It, it's something that I wholeheartedly believe in. So I 100% understand using the, you know, the resources that we have around us um, as, as a method for recovery and for optimization. I, I think, you know, as a religious person, I don't think God would put things on the earth that he didn't intend for us to use. Um, And so, you know, whether it be 
using a specific drug or using essential oils in a natural way to help us feel better. Um, there's, there's always an option. There's always more than one option out there. And that goes for more than just recovery or feeling better. There's always more than one way to do things. So I love that. I, I was just curious if you had tried out both and what the pros and cons or, you know, what benefits you had seen, but obviously a lot of people see either quick pros or cons to going on a certain medication. So thank you. God doesn't make mistakes, right? Yeah, no, he does not. <laughs> so when I, um, when I did those two days of antidepressants, I, um, you know, my cat passed away and I associated my cat to my sister who passed away when I was 17 and she was 21. And so my reason for getting into mental health wasn't COVID, it was grief. And that grief led to depression and anxiety and, uh, that led to addiction, which led to suicidal ideology. So I was in a very, very bad place. And I'd been there for a couple of years and I wasn't even seeing myself anymore. Like I was out of my mind. Um, I remember I looked at myself in the mirror and I went, Ooh, I'm juicy, right? Looked at my butt. I'm juicy. The next day, my girlfriend said, you're anorexic. She hadn't seen me in a number of months. She went, you're anorexic. And I went and weighed myself, which I hadn't done in a long time. And I was very underweight. So I was really messed up. And, um, so I was desperate and I went to the doctor and I said, please give me something. They gave me the antidepressants. I was on it for two days. I was like, I cannot do this. Um, and, and the God, you know, said, here's what you need and sent me literally on Facebook, sent me an article, uh, eight, eight, weeks to a better brain, which is the Harvard study on meditation, where they have people come in, do an MRI scan, go home, meditate for eight weeks, come back to another MRI scan. And then they saw the amygdala shrink, the hippocampus increased in gray matter. I said, that's exactly what I need. And um, I set myself up to do this the Harvard way, average of 27 minutes a day. And I was tracking my minutes, making sure that I was hitting that target. Um, And because of that, I came out of depression and anxiety and suicidal ideology and addiction. And I added 5-HTP to that, which increases your serotonin production in your body. I started eating more whole foods, getting some movement in, some exercise, some yoga, some walks, get that blood flow, right? Reduce that inflammation in the brain by adding more oxygen into your body. Um, So, you know, it's we, we come into mental health for different reasons, right? But ultimately, there's a lot of things that we can use that will help us, whatever the reason is. Meditation always needs to be number one. A whole food diet, I imagine you're eating whole foods. It sure looks like it. (laughs) Well, I have my days where I like to splurge, but I usually try to eat pretty healthy. So, right. Well, I mean, if you're, if you're trying to look after your body in like an optimal way, like, do you, do you notice like when you eat junk foods, your mood goes into a different. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, when I was, I, it's funny cause I'm only 23. Right. And so when I say when I was young, I used to be able to eat anything, but I definitely notice a big difference just on like things that don't like sit well with me, not just food, but just like, I feel like there are certain activities and things that happen throughout a day that have an impact on us. And part of, I feel like part of the most important part of mental health journey or a self-improvement journey is becoming more, becoming more consistent, becoming one with your body and become, and being able to be mindful of how you feel, who you are, wh- who you want to be, what you want to be, and realizing that there's so much that happens in our environments around us that actually impact that. So, um, I, first off, I want to, I'm really glad that you've come out of the state that you were in, you know, that's never easy. It's, it's a, I've been in a very, very similar situation. Um, but I, I'm, I'm always grateful and love hearing about how people have overcome that, especially in a natural way. Um, but I, something that you said that was really interesting was that you associated the grief and the pain of the, um, of the passing of your cat with the passing of your sister. And I think that that's something that a lot of people don't realize is how like our brains are so powerful and we just associate things that we never would have even thought of. Um, so I, that's been while I came into my mental health journey to try to uh, feel better and try to feel like myself, which, you know, may or may not be a little, obviously it's a very personal journey, but I had, I feel like I had kind of selfish intentions at the beginning, you know, it was all about me, but I feel like the thing that I've learned that has helped me the most on that journey is 
realizing what's caused either trauma or grief or pain and realizing what I can do to make a situation better with maybe someone that has caused me grief or pain um, or how I can turn outward and focus less on myself to help myself heal from the pain or the trauma that I've felt. Sometimes that's not always possible with people that have hurt us, but uh, I feel like most of the time it's, it's a very personal journey for us to heal ourselves by just being self-aware enough to say, I'm feeling depressed or I'm feeling sad because of this thing that has happened and being willing to verbally make that association. Right. And then doing the steps necessary to change that exactly. mindset about it. Yeah. So my, my relationship, I'm married. I've been with my husband for 17 years. We just had our 10th wedding anniversary in January. Congratulations. Uh, we fought for 10 years, um, you know, because I, I brought a lot of insecurity into the relationship. He, he had a very special set of circumstances, which is an ex that was competing with me, not quite over him. So ooh, out came all the insecurities. And so we did a lot of fighting about that. Um, my, my poor husband, right? Because like when he met me, he knew me for two and a half years before we got into a relationship. And he's like, wow, wow, check out this girl. And then we get into a relationship and I totally totally lose my shit and he's like okay oh, what happened like where's where's the woman i fell in love with she was right. confident and they're like well, you're a mess so we fought for 10 years our our relationship you know here comes the grief and the depression the anxiety the suicidal ideology the addiction although he didn't even know i hit it quite well we were on the brink of divorce absolute brink of divorce and then i started doing meditation managing my mental health right food diet exercise um redirecting my thoughts and uh my husband has said to himself one more fight and this relationship is over and that fight never happened we've been seven years now without a fight has your journey affected your relationship in any way i think the interesting thing that has happened in our relationship at least with my wife like we we get along pretty well. Um, you know, most of our arguments are us talking things out. Like we do, I wouldn't say that we really fight, but we're both very opinionated people and we both usually feel like we're, we're right. And so we, we talk and communicate and try to come to a middle ground on, on a, on a decision. But I think the thing that I've noticed when things get hard in my relationship, since I've focused more on becoming a better version of myself is I don't really feel like you can help other people until you've helped yourself. Um, and while I do think that sometimes if we got, if we get caught up in ourselves and, you know, why me, why me, it's very, it's very helpful to turn out and serve others. I think that it's, it's hard to have a positive impact on someone if you don't feel like you're having a positive impact on yourself. So the thing that I've noticed the most is when I go into a, a hard conversation with my wife, or we're deciding to you know, make a, a purchase together or, you know, something comes up and we need to work through it. The thing that I've noticed is I, I feel more grounded in that conversation and more willing to be receptive to her point of view, say, I feel very strongly that I'm correct. Right. But I, I feel like since I've taken more time to understand myself, it's also helped me understand others and made me more receptive to working with other people. Not that I wasn't willing to work with my wife before, right? Because that's the whole point of marriage is we're with someone, but I've found it, I've found it just kind of expedites and, and helps the process. Um, when, when either one or both people take the time to try to become a better person, which ends up helping the other person in the relationship. Did you find that meditation helped you take ego out of the equation? Yes. So when I started, when I started meditating, that was also the, uh, right around the time that I started studying stoicism. Um, and stoicism has had an incredible effect on my life. Um, I feel like it articulates a lot of things that I've always thought about myself or that it, like when I hear something, it just kind of like it clicks and makes sense. It's like, yes, that is you. Um, but removing ego from the equation and removing, you know, any biases or saying things have to be this way there. It should be this way. That's, that's not a thing. There's no one way to do things. And it's all about coming to a conclusion on the other person that you're working with. Even if that's a conclusion that you have to come by, come to with yourself. If, if you're just trying to make a decision for yourself, you have to remove ego or any preconceived notions of how you've done it in the past you have to be open to, uh, you know, the possibility of something new happening. And that goes for being in a relationship as well. So yes, hundred percent meditation has made a huge difference uh, in, on that aspect. Yes. Can you define stoicism for the listeners? Um, stoicism 
how I interpret stoicism is that we can control what we can control. Um, so like you could say something to me and the only thing that I can control there is how I respond and how I react. I can't control what you're going to say to me, but it's a, it's very focused on the individual and the self and strengthening, fortifying the individual so that they're more grounded and ready to receive what life throws at them. Is your wife doing anything to do with long COVID? Um, so my wife actually works in the hospital. So she is a, uh, an echocardiologist. She just, she just finished school. Congratulations, Taylor. <laughs> um, very long program, but as in relation to long haul COVID, um, I don't know that she's doing anything specific. We've talked about it and we've studied it quite a bit. Um, but I feel like if anything, we've noticed that the things that we were doing before have become even more important, like getting your exercise in, eating a healthy diet, getting enough sleep, the things that are kind of the staples and the foundations, um, have just become more important to us, but I don't, we haven't done anything specific for healing or overcoming long haul COVID. Okay. Is she still suffering from the effects of it? She is not. So she was actually asymptomatic. Um, so I had it very, very rough. She, I, I won't say but that she you. got lucky. <laughs> yes. She got very lucky and I had it pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's, wow. she's a trooper though. She had to put up with me while I had COVID. So that, I feel like that's just as bad. Well, lucky you, you have a doctor. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's your... Right. Yeah. I can just go to her. She has all the information. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So did, uh, I know that you bring up long haul COVID. Have you been doing anything to study or have you had COVID? What, I mean, what has kind of been your experience with that? I, as far as I know, I haven't had COVID when COVID first hit, I had a really nasty cold that mm. was around for like longer than I've had any cold. Um, so I was coughing. I had like, a, like my nose was just, it was just a faucet. Um, man, the Kleenex is around this house. Let me tell you. So I had a cold, um, but, you know, the symptoms they were talking about for COVID, like just feeling like you were dying, basically. Um, I did not go through that. So I had what seemed like a head cold for a really long time. Uh, I recently went to Costa Rica in January. You know, we have to test before we come back to Canada. And so I did a rapid test and, uh, you know, one of the girls who's with us, she's a, a nurse and she said, um, okay, so it's, it's gonna, it's gonna tell you if you're not negative or positive, but if you just watch the stick for a while in another half hour, if you see a faint line show up, um, then you've had COVID before it's picking up on gotcha. like old COVID in you. And it didn't give me that. It said it as though I've never had COVID. Um, so I've yet to test positive for COVID. I went to a party that ended up being a super spreader. Um, I went to a Christmas party and then like a week later, my friend's texting me going, um, just so you know, like five of us just tested positive for COVID. Oh, no. I'm like, I'm not going to go get checked because I don't want to know. Um, because I didn't have, honestly, I felt fine until she said that. And the moment I read that, I suddenly felt sick. Yep. So it's interesting what the brain will do, right? And I had a cold again. Um, so I've had a cold a few times. And sometimes I wonder if it's like me, you know what I mean? Like, it's like the placebo effect. Like but convincing positive. yourself that you have COVID. <laughs> Like not, but like the, like not convincing myself, but it's just right. like, like, I'm telling you like the minute after I read that sentence, my nose started running and I started coughing and I was like, Fuck, I felt fine. Now I'm sick. Right. And just because I read that. So that was really something. And then I, like, it kind of made me wonder too, if, because again, we do talk about placebo and how like, and, and you know, this as well as I do, what you think definitely has an effect on your body. And we have people out there we have, we have people who talk about meditation, how you can actually heal your body through meditation. Um, and you can, you can have control over your own health. You can heal yourself. If you put enough focus into it, if you say to yourself, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, you're going to be sick. Um, but the, the reverse can actually happen. And that's what the placebo effect is. It's like, they're going to give you a pill, sugar pill, but you think it's a real pill and wow, I'm healed. I feel so much better. And so I think the opposite can happen too. It's like, I'm sick. There you are. You're sick. And, and that I'm, I'm fairly certain that's what happened because I was fine until I read that sentence. And I wonder if all this talk about COVID in the very beginning and how it's like this thing that's like, we, we shut down everything. Right. right. And that's how serious it was. And I was sicker than I've ever been in a long time because 
we're sick as a culture, as a society, everybody's getting sick, be afraid of being sick. And that's what the dialogue was. So it's interesting, psychosomatic. There we go. Somebody's telling me I'm live right now. I'm, I'm live on TikTok at this moment. Oh, um, well, hello, TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> so I've never tested positive for COVID. Um, I do have my vaccines. I hope I never get it. I have, I hope I never, you know, have anything happen. I've had friends who are vaccinated, get COVID and get fairly sick. Um, so I don't know. One, one of the things that I, we've talked about it, I think twice now, uh, on this call, but I really like that we keep bringing up cause it's been something that I've loved learning about, about how just thinking something or just, you know, discussing with someone or just kind of becoming self-aware really has an impact on how we're feeling physically. Um, I, I found that there's such a deep connection between how we feel emotionally and what we feel and what we think and how we feel. Um, and, and one of the things I, you mentioned the amygdala earlier, um, I'd be very interested to learn what you know about amygdala hijack. Um, cause I know that I de- there's sometimes where I get really stressed or anxious about one very, very specific event. And I feel the exact same radiating pain kind of right in my, uh, it would be my C7 and T1 junction, um, kind of right where my shoulders and my back meet. So uh, if, you know, if you know anything about amygdala hijack, I'd be very interested to learn about what you know there. Right. So, um, you know, the way that I visualize the amygdala is something that will pump and shrink, right? So if you have stress, 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 you're pumping, 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 and it's growing, 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 and meditation counters that and shrinks it. Uh, I've never heard the term amygdala hijack, by the way, just for the record, I've never heard that term before. But if you were coming to me saying, how do I overcome this? Um, I would say it starts with the words that are going on in your head. And so um, what is this particular thing that stresses you out? Or what is one particular thing that stresses you out? Um, well, uh, with this yeah. specific association right here, I usually notice that if I'm getting stressed about work uh, or if I have a project coming up or a deadline, I'll notice that um, like I hold a lot of tension kind of in my neck and in my back. I get frequent massages for it. But um, I, I notice that whenever I get stressed about work, I always feel it right there in that same exact spot. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll usually do like a minute of nasal breathing uh, and just kind of take some deep breaths and that that helps immediately. But I just think it's so interesting that we uh, just very quickly and automatically our brains are like, OK, well, I'm thinking this and I'm feeling this. I need to put this somewhere. So I'm going to pick right here and put it right on the middle of your back. Right. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's usually when I'm feeling stressed about a project at work or something. Yeah. So uh, my friend Sheldon, your twin, in so yes, my twin. Ways, by the way, so many ways, because Sheldon and I would be having this exact same conversation. He's, he does the same body. Like you're just, mm, you two need to talk. I want to have the two units. <laughs> I can tell the difference. I don't know if I could. So, um, so my friend Sheldon, he gets that uh, on the right side, his, uh, his dominant arm, by the way, it gets stored here. He gets stressed and it, it goes in here in the back of his neck. Hmm. Um, so I want, I like that you have something that works immediately for it. As soon as you notice it happening, you do some nasal breathing and you alleviate that. Right. Yeah. So I want, so it, I, I, me where I go in like my, my logical brain wanting to like, you know, ask myself, how can I avoid that altogether? Um, you know, what I'm saying to myself is what is the dialogue leading up to the stress? And, and so you're putting yourself under pressure, right? You have a deadline, there's a project. Are you literally saying to yourself, this is stressing me out? I don't, I don't think I'm consciously thinking that. I think that my body, um, I think it's, it's usually a mixture of like my posture and where I'm sitting and the activity that I'm doing. Um, and I'll notice that like, if, if I'm working on a very specific task or I have something coming up that I'll just kind of have this quick light switch that goes on. That's like, okay, now we're stressed. Right. And now we feel it, which is so interesting. And now we're stressed because now we need to do something for someone else. Hmm. I hadn't thought about it that way, but yes, that does make sense. I need to do something for someone else and it needs to meet their criteria. And maybe I'm afraid it's not going to. Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, my favorite part as I've been like noticing this very specific area um, is again, it comes back to stoicism and understanding what we can control, but our body's natural response is to take 
either the cue or uh, what we're feeling in that specific moment and have some sort of reward that we're looking forward to. So I've noticed, you know, kind of my habit is if I get stressed out while I'm working, that also then gives me a craving to go eat something that is a very specific craving that as soon as I have those thoughts, I end up going downstairs and eating something. So I'm, I'm learning to catch those cues and respond and kind of alter them before they get to the point where I'm like, okay, now I'm stressed. Right. Um, and eating something, if you're drawn towards junk food, that just exacerbates the situation because it puts yep. you in mental funk because junk food has an effect on your mental well being, putting you in a, not in a good, like not in a good place. Right increases depression and anxiety um, because serotonin is produced in your gut and you're inhibiting serotonin and junk food is highly likely causing inflammation, actually factually causing inflammation in your body, which is inflammation in the brain. So go get an apple instead. Um, so when you are doing a project, organic apples, by the way, the bomb, the bomb, <laughs> um, and it's so satisfying and it, it really keeps me on point. Um, but when you are doing a project for someone, what about redefining it as something for you instead of something for someone else? I've, I've noticed, you know, on that exactly what you're saying there, when I have something personally that I'm looking forward to, it always helps me feel invested in what I'm working on. Aside from having to do something for work or for someone else. Um, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the things that I've actually talked about with my therapist is why we procrastinate doing different things. And there's, there's five different types of procrastinators. And one of them is being a procrastinator that doesn't want to do things because they're doing something for someone else, or they have some sort of negative emotion for the person that they're required to do the task for. Um, and, and I've noticed that, you know, if maybe I, maybe I'm just like dreading the thought of having to present the projects that I'm working on. It's no longer, it's not about me. It's the, it's the fear of how people are going to receive the, the work and the hours and the effort that I've just put in. But it, I, I think that's very true. Reframing it to a point where it's like, I am going to feel good when this project is done because I'm going to know that I've put in my best work and whatever happens after that is out of my control. So it's definitely something I'm going to try next time I feel that little pain right there in my back. I'm, I'm going to go through exactly what we just talked about. And I'm doing this for me. I'm doing this for my sense of accomplishment and achievement. Yeah, I love that. I think it's really interesting finding the, the similarities between random people that you meet. I feel like there's always some sort of connection, um, you know, we've never talked prior to this in person before, but getting on this call, I can tell that we're very, very similar people and that we've tried a lot of the same remedies for a lot of the same things that we felt, but we both have very, very different individual lives, which I, I think is, is fascinating. There's so many different things to try. There's so many different ways that we can live a life and there's no one set way to do it, but we all kind of end up doing it in a similar fashion where we can conversate about it and, and talk about what's worked for us. So that's fun. I love it. I love it when we can come together because like, you know, one thing that I say is, is I can learn about, I can learn about myself through a conversation, right? And so conversations are a dynamic way of learning more, but even learning about yourself too. So I love that we did this. Do you think you would have a uh, good advice on how to make a relationship work? If I had advice on how to make a relationship work, I would say to, to put the other person's needs ahead of yours. I found that most of the times that I've, that, you know, I, I don't feel like we've necessarily had any rough or rocky patches in our, in our relationship, but I feel like the times that I feel most overwhelmed or that I feel like I'm not living up to the expectation or what I'm supposed to be doing in, in my marriage, it's usually because I'm focusing on myself. Um, and, and that I haven't focused on my wife first. And obviously we should take time for ourselves as individuals. We should take time and focus on us, but it's also important to know that it's, it's a partnership. It's a relationship that is more than just being one person in the relationship. It's, it's important to render that and give that to the other person that needs it just as much as you do uh, to have a successful relationship. So I would say, forget yourself, uh, and, and serve the other person first, and then, you know, worry about what, what comes after that. Mm, I like to say that love is a verb and a healthy relationship. <laughs> one of the dynamics of a healthy relationship is where you are of service to each other. I love that. Love is a verb. Yeah. Uh, Ryan, you've been amazing. Thank you so much for doing this with me. I appreciate you so much. 
Thank you. It was, it was a blast. I'm in no way, shape or form an expert on anything, but I love, love, love talking about these things. So, um, yeah, I mean, if anyone ever wants to talk about this stuff, I'm always available and always willing to talk about it, but I hope that we get to have a conversation just like this in the future as well. It'll be really fun. Where can people find you? Um, you can find me on social media at productive Ryan. Um, my website is productive Ryan.com. Um, and I'm available in all places at Productive Ryan. So that, that would be the best place to find me. I love that. Thank you, Ryan. You are an absolute pure gem. Thank you so much. It was so fun talking to you and we'll keep in touch. Have a good rest of your day. 100%. You too, my love. Bye. Thanks. Bye.